it's important to have a good workflow and development environment set up in order to be successful in this course. In front of us are the project files for this movie. The first thing it will do is we'll open the index.html file and the main.css file in our text editor. My text editor is open in the background, it's that black screen. I'll click the index.html file, hold shift and click the main.css file, thereby highlighting both of the files. Now I'll drag them into my text editor and release. Within Sublime Text 2, which is the text editor I will use throughout this course, it has opened the files and created two tabs at the top of the screen, and I can navigate between those tabs. Now if you're using another text editor, say BB Edit, you might find that it displays the tabs at the left side of the screen or the right side. Regardless of the text editor that you're using, you'll need to be able to switch between the files fluidly. Here, we'll edit our code, save it, and then we'll look at the final product rendered within a web page. So for that, we'll go to Chrome. Feel free to use whatever contemporary web browser you wish. I will then bring up the files within the Finder or in Windows, the Explorer, and I'll only drag into the browser window the index.html file. Now this index.html file doesn't have anything within it, so we don't really see it. That'll change as we edit the content. More importantly, however, I want you to look at the path for this particular file. The left portion of the path is going to be different on your computer. On my computer, it's directly opening the file. That's denoted by the file, colon, and the slashes. And it happens to be contained within a folder that's under the user's hdes desktop portion of the finder. Yours will be somewhere else. The right portion, though, should be the same. Now, all these percent %20s actually stand for spaces because you can't have a space within a path. So every time you see a percent %20, that really is a space. So it just takes some getting used to. Now, within your browser, you want to make sure that you have access to the developer console. In Chrome, that is accessed through View, Developer, and then we're going to be using Developer Tools. And I'll often refer to this as the Developer Console. That shortcut is Control shift i on Windows or Command-Option-I on Mac, or we'll just click it. It opens at the bottom of the screen by default. You can undock it by clicking this icon. Perhaps you have two monitors and you want to place it on the other monitor. I don't have two monitors. I want to see it at the bottom, so I'll dock it by clicking that icon again. There are tabs at the top of this window. The two tabs we'll use most often are Console and Elements. We'll use both of these tabs a lot with console displaying messages that we log to the console. We'll use this mostly with debug. And elements displaying the rendered HTML at that point in time. And that's different than just viewing the source. Viewing the source is the source code without any updates to the DOM or the document object model. The elements tab will show us updates to the DOM and that's important in this course. So the basics are, you will have your text editor open, you'll find your files, drag them into the text editor in order to edit them. Really, you should always have the index.html file and the main.css files open at all times through this course. And when you're done, you then go to your browser and you load them into the page. And there's one last thing you need to remember, and that is that we can refresh the page by going to view, reload this page, or sometimes called refresh. The shortcut is command R or control R on Windows. And that's important because as we make changes, we need a new copy of the page, and so we will reload it. And so with a fluid workflow and a good working environment, you've set yourself up for success in learning D3 in this course.